Good morning everyone, hopefully you can see and hear us. Pip here, Michael's with me today and we are continuing on our draw along series. This term where we've been looking at Europe, Czechoslovakia in particular, and we are today going to be drawing this Adar or Viper. Um, this is the image we're going to be working from. So we've got this Adder curled up, looks like he's ready to strike. We've also got loads of facts to share with you to learn about this incredible little creature, this lovely reptile. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we're doing today. I'm going to do things slightly different today. I Anyone that joined us on the octopus drawing will know that it was a, a slow torture drawing every single ten tentacle and um, sucker on the animal, especially within one hour. And I feel like it will be very similar if we draw the whole snake, trying to get every scale in and keeping the accuracy without um, without wanting to give up. So my plan today is to actually focus on the head of the adder and really study this area and try and get as accurate a drawing as possible, really focusing on each of the individual scales and really get that realism style. But you are free to do whatever you want with your illustration. So if you want to draw the whole body, you can absolutely do that. You could even add other things. I was imagining this viper curled around a little clutch of eggs, which actually wouldn't be that accurate. And I'll explain why when I go through our facts. But, you know, just like with any artwork and whenever we do our drawings especially, there are no rules. So if you want to do it your way, you can. And I look forward to seeing your creative interpretation on things. Hi Susie, I can see that you said hello, thanks for letting me know, so everything you can hear and see is okay, which is good. be interesting to see how many people join us today, because I know not everybody's a fan of snakes, um, but they are fascinating animals, and also just as a drawing challenge, they definitely do challenge us because of the patterns that we can see in the body, and these individual scales, and trying to draw them accurately, because when we zoom into this Im image, they're not all the same, they're not all the same size, and they're not all the same shapes. So something I want to work on to say for my own development is trying to get that accuracy and make it look as realistic as possible without rushing to get through the drawing and trying to fit everything in. So that's why I'm choosing to enlarge a section and just focus on the head and maybe part of the neck for this illustration. So um, if everyone's okay and we are good to get going, I'll get started. I'm just going to share a couple of facts before we start, just giving everyone an opportunity to get settled in and get, make sure they've got the right equipment. If you'd seen us about 20 seconds ago, I was like, oh, we haven't got paintbrushes, we haven't got water. So um, know what that feeling's like when you're not quite organised. Um, so the Vipera berus, I've, apologies if I've said that wrong, I think that's the Latin word, the Vipera berus is the common European adder or common European viper. Is the only venomous snake that can be found in Czechoslovakia. Has anyone ever seen one of these? So we have them in the UK, we have them, they're called adders, and again they are the only venomous snake that we have in the UK. I've never seen one, I think it would be cool to see one. Glad You're glad you've never seen one Michael. They're not anything to be terrified of, and again as I go through the facts I'll explain that as, uh, I'll explain why as well. Um, so they're not also known as the common European adder, or the common European viper. It's a species of venomous snake in the viper family. It's extremely widespread and can be found throughout much of Europe and as far as East Asia. So they're not isolated to Czechoslovakia, they're all over Europe and even beyond. Um, and by their name, the fact that they're called the common adder, they're not considered endangered, although in some areas they are. So overall as a species, they are not endangered, but in, for example, in Switzerland, they are endangered. So there in particular, their numbers are dec declining. So <clears throat> that's our little introduction to the viper. Let's get started with the drawing. Susie said, I've never actually seen a snake before. I'd like to see one though. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen snakes in captivity. I've held a snake, um, but not one native to our country. I've seen lots of um, grass snakes, which technically aren't snakes. They're a form of lizard, legless lizard. Um, but when you first see one, that's... They look like a snake enough to me, but I've never seen an adder, and that's because they're quite secretive, elusive animals. I had a snake go around my neck. Once. You've had one around your neck, Michael. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, I think I farm. Oh, interesting. Well, Curly's farm. Yeah. So I'm going to start off by sketching the eye in, 
And then I really want to try, because I've noticed on my draw alongs now, when I review my own artwork, because most people should continually review their art artwork, that I'm not quite getting my proportions quite right. So my angles and that are a little bit off. And the picture still looks like a good illustration, but it's not quite accurate to the picture. So today, I'm going to really try and focus on getting this as accurate as I can. So I'm taking my time with the line drawing and the details. Let's see if I can improve my artwork. Because you're never finished, you're never complete. you never completed artwork. There's always more you can do. There's always more improvements you can make. So now I'm trying to better my artwork by slowing things down a little bit now which is why I just want to focus on the head for now to get that a little bit more accurate. So I'm sketching in rough shapes and outlines. I will probably correct this quite a lot and make adjustments as I go. <coughs> so already I can see that I've made that body, t uh, the body of his head too short. And I look at the distance of the eye. I'm going to sketch in the sort of stripe pattern I can see because that will help me work out where the end of his face should be. Joseph can't see the picture, as in can't see the drawing I'm using, or do you mean the, the work, the illustration I'm working with? If you need this image, when you look on the event, you can see it in the discussion board. So you'd either need to print it out or grab another device to be able to view it from, because obviously I wouldn't be able to show my drawing and the illustration at the same time. And also because I need to, we need to enlarge the image. So it's always better to work from a second device if you've got one. But otherwise, if you haven't got access, you could just copy from my illustration, if that makes it a little bit easier. And draw what I'm drawing as I go along. So I'm just drawing in this, the main shapes just to help me get the form of this snake's head to begin with. It's got quite a flat head. I imagine that helps him to be streamlined. Something isn't quite right with my illustration. I'm not sure what it is. I will keep correcting things as I go along. dropping the neck down and I might try and sketch in a bit of the coil that we can see as well. Whether I have time to add the detail on remains to be seen. We'll see how we go. So that's the rough outline. It's not perfect. It's not exact to the image. Again, as I go in adding more details, I will probably make slight alterations and adjustments until I'm happy with it. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back into the eye and refine the details and try and get it even more accurate. And if I've got lots of sketchy lines, I'll rub them out as I go because otherwise my little brain will get confused. So I'm going much neater with my sketching now, trying to neaten it up and make it more refined and accurate. And remember, the key is 80-20. So 80% 80 of the time, you are looking at the reference image. 20% of the time, you look at your own drawing. And that's because our memory plays tricks with us. We think we know what something looks like, and we just make guesses. And actually, a lot of the time, that's not right. So we just keep flicking. If you could, if you could see my eyes now, it flicks from the, my tablet to my page an awful lot of a tennis match so I can watch a tennis match especially with these scales so this is where I knew it would be tricky when you look around the eye they are all different sizes these scales but they're a lot smaller than on the body so I'm just taking my time to draw in the main scales and I'm really following the reference image to try and get it as accurate as possible which is takes a lot of patience and that's not something I am famous for so this is a real challenge for me. And then along the top of the eye, it looks like one long scale. 
Bak det är lite obehagligt. And they all change shape, so that's why I have to keep referencing it. Because if I just did it from what I thought it would look like, every scale would look exactly the same, and that is just not true. Now, after those little ones, we suddenly go into big scales. It's like crazy paving. That's what it reminds me of. Which is very hard to sort of predict. How's everyone getting on so far? How are you getting on, Michael? Good. You taking your time with the scales? Yeah. Good. tell when I've gone into deep concentration mode because I stop chatting away. <laughs> I have to focus on what I'm doing. And so as I'm putting the scales in, just I don't know if you noticed, but I've changed there where the nostril was because the scales ended at a certain point and that's where the nostril was. So I'm adjusting my picture as I go along and hopefully it will look more accurate, not less accurate. I'm not going to draw like the little, the little tiny weeny scales. You're not? Like not, like because some, some of the scales you can't see. Yeah. So like it's like part of the body, I'm just going to just make a little change there. Does anyone have any pet snakes? I really want one. You want one? Yeah. What is it you like about them? You're not getting one, but yeah, <laughs> what would really you like though? I just like them. They're quite fascinating. Yeah. Would I just want to shed their skin. Yeah, that's cool. I want, I want one of those like yellow and white ones. A corn snake? Yeah. So I've had, that's the one of the ones I've had before corn snakes. It's not a bad start. But you see what I mean about the amount of scales. If we drew the whole snake in, we would definitely need a lot longer than an hour to do this. <laughs> need a week, I think. I'm not going to lie, if anyone's struggling, you're not on your own. This is a really challenging thing to do. This is one of the reasons why I've included it in the draw along, because I knew it would test our skills a little bit, push us out of our comfort zone. I've said it before, drawing furry and hairy animals I find so much more forgiving. You can be much more sketchy and less accurate. This one really takes a lot of focus and a lot of patience. Some of the scales towards the back of the head are a little bit more difficult to see the definition. So I am having to use my imagination and guess a little bit. When we come to add in the tone and the colour, hopefully we'll make it look like it does on the picture. But these ones around the front we can really see clearly. There's no excuse for sort of guessing, we can see the lines, so we should try and follow them as much as possible. So where the pattern is stronger, we can see the scales as well. So we've got a nice thick, what will be a brown stripe, but you can see elements of black in there as well.
few other colours already, Michael. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Let's have a look at Miss Gaz's drawers. Not too bad. Not too bad. Nice. We might have time to put some background in as well yeah. while you're going. I don't know about anyone else, but when you really concentrate on an element of your drawing, is it just me? I hold my breath. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not a healthy way to draw. Just more facts. So, this is I. This is something new I learned today. Did you know that snakes are venomous, not poisonous? If you eat something that makes you sick, then it's called poisonous. If an animal like a snake delivers its toxins when it bites, it's considered venomous. Mm. So that was an interesting little fact. I would never have differentiated between the two. Now I know why we have those two words. Now I can see, now I look again, so where I've been focused on the individual scales, I've kind of dropped the ball a bit in terms of my accuracy of the picture. But here I can see from the photo that I've kind of sunk in a little bit here and it needs to come out a little bit more. So I'm just going to adjust that quickly. So it might mean that I add in some scales that weren't there. I just want the form of the snake to be more accurate. So I'm going to do that. You do have the ability as an artist to sort of change things to how you want them to be. No rules here. So there is one rule. What's that? Enjoy what you're doing. Well, yeah, that. <laughs> because if you were a real artist and send the artwork, you kind of can't like sell other people's artwork. Oh, that's a good rule. Yeah, you can't sell other people's artwork, which is why we put signatures on our artwork as well, so that nobody can pinch our art. This is giving me vibes of my GCSE in art that I did many moons ago. I studied snakes. I've just remembered it's all bringing it back to me now. And um, got sick of drawing them after a while. But I made a clay model of a snake. Oh, you did. And I did the. No, no. That went long, long ago. I, did, I wasn't careful enough with my stuff, it got broken up. I did in individual scales out of clay. Oh, no. I was obviously a more patient work. person back then. It was, a l it was an eight hour exam back then. I, did. I don't know how it goes now. All that work though, and now it's broken. Yep. It is no more. I was just so sad. <laughs> it got broken during the exam. When we went on a lunch break, I came back and somebody had torn the head off. And I had to start again. But didn't didn't stop me. No. I've been angry. I was a little bit. I wasn't a huge fan of school. <laughs> yeah. I never can be had a bit that. cruel. I never had that. I've, if I don't have like something, I draw something. I've ne I never had someone come up and no. say No. The key was it didn't let. I didn't let it beat me. So I carried yeah. on. I picked myself up. Brushed myself off. And I got an A star in that GCSE. So it didn't stop me. It's not great anymore. And that's anymore. No, this is it. You learn from things, don't you, even if it's a negative situation. Oops. See, I am guessing a lot on these scales because it's Me very too. difficult to see. I was saying that part of the photo, it's a bit more difficult to see what's going on. I'm really guessing. So, we are using our imagination a little bit to fill in the gaps. I don't really have like that sort of colour I like. The kind of white, the silvery, I don't really have that. No, Leanne said, it says, adders are shy, yes. Oh, I've got a fact about that. Let me find it. Oh, I've got two pages of facts. <laughs> Let me read some out and I might get to it as we go. So, because of their large distribution and a broad range of habitats, the pub population of adders is currently not threatened, but their numbers are decreasing slightly due to habitat loss for agriculture and for collecting them for the pet trade and venom extraction. So once again, any decline in their numbers yes. is once again due to us humans, not us 
individuals, but us Most as a species. Humans find this mm. The adder was once a common sight in large parts of the British countryside, but I've never seen one, so they no. can't be that common now. But in the last decade in particular, it has slipped into decline. Surveys suggest a third of remaining adder populations may compromise of fewer than 10 adults. So that me what that means is a lot less adders are reaching full grown maturity and the ability to then make more babies. So that will have a bigger impact in the long term. They'll be it'll be more difficult to maintain their animals if there's none, uh, m maintain their numbers if there's less and less getting to that age where they can reproduce. Um, the last recorded death in the UK from a snake bite was in 1972. Well, oh, that I wasn't guess. that wasn't necessarily an adder, but presumably if it's in the UK, that is our only venomous snake. 14 people have died from adder bites in the past 145 years. Many people, yeah. yeah, and about 100 adder bites are reported in the UK each year, with most between February and October. So whilst there are some nasty side effects and symptoms to an adder bite, it's not considered to be deadly. Um, if you do come across this species, please do not disturb. They are still dangerous and should be left alone. The more you agitate them, the more likely you could get bitten. I have got a list of symptoms. I'll work through those in a minute. I've just got to draw some scales in. I, like get, I get caught up in what I'm learning about. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I'll just draw in a second. Then. Like one of the symptoms are probably like if you like start start to get sleepy, maybe. Something. Yeah, fatigue is. I yeah. believe it's on there. We do see changes in the shape and the form of the scale. Some of them have got almost points to them, some are more rounded. I'm worried I might run out of time, so I might just start adding the shade in and then if we've got time, carry on adding some more scales there because I want to make sure that we get the detail down. So I'm going to start on this awesome eye, which in previous pictures that we've drawn from, it's just a very dark colour, but we can really see some different shades in this eye, so I want to really represent that. You've got like some sort of ambery orange, there's almost a yellow tone in there as well as brown. So I kind of want to add that in with my pencils, all the different shades, and try and make it look 3D. You can see the depth, you can see darker shades which help to show that round shape of the eye. And that very cool black slit as well. Something we definitely associate with a lot of reptiles, especially snakes, isn't it? I've realised that every time I, when I put my water cup, my cup water on, it's it's always um, twenty two minutes, up, like twenty two past. Yeah, it's so strange. Is that a target you set yourself? No, it's just like every time I, I would do Which the coincidentally, water on. that's the point you get to do with your picture. Now I've got a darker brown going over there for the shadow, put a little bit of black in as well. Tell me what's left of my black pencil. Mm. I've got black pencil here somewhere. Is it a watercolour pencil? Yeah. Uh, I think it might be. Is it? Might be. No, no, no. I have to struggle on with my little pencil nub. <laughs> Get some more for next term. the eye. Hmm, what next? I'm going to start shading some of these browny coloured scales. Now I'm not just block colouring them, I'm sort of colouring the edges and I'll blend out the brown with the water when I get to that point. At the moment I'm just putting the colour down on the page. 
this is a bit of a base colour, I'm going to put some darker tones on top of it for this really defined black stripe that we've got running down. Good idea. That's a really prominent dark stripe, but it needs building on with a darker brown as well to make it really stand out. Again, I might go back in with a black as well, just to give it nice crisp edges, and so you can see the pattern on them more clearly. Even when I add the colour, I'm still glancing at the picture all the time for reference on where the shading should go, not just trying to guess it. I do for some of the picture if <laughs> we're in a bit of a rush. So I'm running out of time, but for the most part, I'm really trying to focus on making sure I put the colour in the right place. Things have got numb already. Dark brown. Just to give my hand a break for a second. <laughs> the most common symptoms of adult bites are local edema or edema, so um, uh, red mark, bruising, where you've been bitten, reddening and pain of the bitten site, and also the general symptoms coming from the uh, alimentary tract, so vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain. Circulatory system, so you could go into shock, you could have ECG abnormalities, so your heart might start racing. The central nervous system, so sleepiness, vertigo, disorientation, loss of consciousness, you can pass out. Um, and then allergic symptoms, obviously if you're allergic uh, to the venom, so fever as well. The common adder is found in different t terrains, habitat complexity being essential for different aspects of its behaviour. They are found in many habitats, such as forest clearings, marshlands, heathlands, pastures with hedgerows, and even alpine meadows in the Alps. It feeds on small mammals, birds, lizards, and amphibians, and in some cases on spiders, worms, and insects. So they don't really look to us as a food source. So in terms of being scared of and frightened of snakes, you know, like a lot of wildlife, they are much more afraid of us than we should be of them. And they would not want to have a conflict with us they do not see us as prey, 
which is why um, they will only attack generally if they've been stood on or you're trying to pick them up so in, in self-defense if they feel like they have no choice so if you are walking somewhere where adders are known to to habitat then you should be careful of and aware of where you're walking to avoid stepping on one I'm going in with a grey on these pale, paler scales, just to sort of almost outline them a little bit. To show the texture a bit more clearly. I'm going to get some other colours coming in there as well. I've actually an actual watercolour paint, so black. A black one? Yeah. Oh, that's the one, the new one I bought to replace my little one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I'm sure it is. It's just one by itself. No, yeah, yeah, I've got a black pencil again. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> that makes a big difference <laughs> to doing draw along, trust me. everyone getting on have the scales beaten you or are you getting on okay so it's half past already so if I tried to draw the whole snake in an hour that would be very very tricky <laughs> or I could have done it but definitely not with a, this level of detail and that's what we're trying to go for today. like stony coloured scales a lot of them which when you think about their habitat and where they might hide I would imagine that would more than help them with their camouflage I don't think that's by accident that they have those colourings well done Michael super quick again using the black to sort of create more def def blah, definition between the scales just like on the illustration on the photo you can see black lines I'm not just simply outlining it though I'm looking at where there are thicker parts and thinner parts and trying again to replicate that as best as possible I need to get a little bit darker up here. Look at some grey again. Do 
Mm -hmm. So you're continuously building up in layers of colour and tone. definition on the scales of this part are just a little bit more subtle but you can still see some lines of darker denim as well it's definitely got some black shading in there as well and then we go to a lighter grey it's like a definite pattern that follows through from the head right through the bot body so we'll try and keep that in as well You can even see a little black, not black, brown scale right in the middle of the grey aspect there that continues down again. When you look at the photo, it continues down and that's what becomes this brown stripe, I believe. Or maybe the stripe, the spotty ones that come around here, I can't quite see. Oh yeah, so it's the spotty ones. Spotty stripe continues down. So I'm going to try and include that as well. Get on, guys. Like any any comments for a while? Hope everything's going all right. Now that I've looked again at my picture, I've decided that this was not dark brown enough. It's too sandy coloured, so I'm just going back over with this brown because I think that's more accurate. dark brown there I'm just going to add in that definition and then it all sort of merges together into a brown dark brown on the top of the head so then back in with a light grey on this part here there's a lot going on isn't there you just think this, this, we've just studied the head, but there's so many shapes and forms and colours and tones. There's loads going on. Oh, Joe's joined us. Sorry I'm late. Hope you're all enjoying this. Oh, are you all enjoying the slimmery snake today? They are fascinating, if not very, very difficult to draw. They are, they are definitely a test of patience and will. And I think the more patient you can show when drawing something like this, the better your illustration will be. I am not, like I said before, not typically a very patient person. I get very bored very quickly and want to move on to the next thing. So this is a real test for me. This is a challenge for me. No, I don't think I'll have time. I've only got 20 minutes left. And I'm still adding in the detail, like black outline. So, I mean, if I tried to do the whole body, it would have been, it'd still be a nice illustration, but I would not have had the time to put this level of detail into it. And that's what I wanted to work on today. So, yeah. this is like a two hour art Two hour art lesson. lesson. Although I finished like 20 That's it, you really early, so. <laughs> You'd be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, wouldn't you? <laughs> and just giving that definition. 
Bring you round down. What other facts have I got for you? Oh, this was interesting. The common adder, like most other vipers, is, let me get this right, ovoviviparus. No, ovoviviparus. I don't know if I said that right. It's a long word anyway. It's a new word I hadn't seen before, so I had to look it up. And that means it produces the young by means of eggs which are hatched within the body of the parent. So they don't just lay eggs. Now I said right at the beginning, oh, you could have it curled up around a batch of eggs. That wouldn't be accurate because actually they lay the eggs. They have the eggs within the body and then the eggs hatch within the body, not outside of the body. So it looks like they give birth to live young, which they do, but they have laid eggs like other reptiles. And I did not know that. That was news to me. Uh, that's another interesting fact and that's apparently a common trait of most vipers not necessarily snakes vipers i suppose as well that means that they the young are less vulnerable when they're born you think if you they they have to um lay the eggs and protect the eggs because they're sort of sitting in a state for predators to come along and eat them aren't they so i imagine by doing that and um, hatching them within their bodies, it keeps them safer for a little bit longer. Females breed once every two to three years, so not every year, with litters, they call them litters, usually being born in late summer to early autumn. Litters range in size from three to 20, and the young, the babies stay with their mum just a few days before they go off on their own. in these black lines and I'm happy with them then I'm going to go in with my paintbrush a really thin paintbrush with not very much water because I don't want it all to, I don't want to lose all this detail so I don't want to just wash it with water I'm going to have to work on each scale individually again it's almost like you've drawn it three times but hopefully we'll get a nice effect I might not finish in full by the time the hour's up but I'll give it my best shot once again if you haven't joined us before I've noticed a couple of new names then you can um, or we invite you to share your work on a post later this evening so please don't post it onto any of the other previous posts because we'll miss it we're looking for a post of a photo of this image my drawing um, and it will explain on that post to upload your your photo if you'd like some feedback from me on what you've done well and then a little tip on how you can improve your artwork even more next time and so that goes on at around 6 p.m and you have till 9 p.m to do that nearly there with these black lines Okay, I think I might start adding water now, just so that we can get, make sure that some of it's done at least, even if I don't have time to finish at all. I'm going to put my paint brush. I'm going to start, as I normally do, with the eye. leaving that nice white highlight at the top like it's reflecting light and then I'm going to go to the nostril because it's another dark feature of the drawing and then work on these scales again I'm following the lines that I've drawn rather than just 
and washing it out to try and blend the colours a bit better so you don't see the pencil marks so that you have even more variation in your tone. Keep referencing your image as well so that you remind yourself how it should look. If you are new to following us, we have got a few different things that we offer in terms of free content, but we have something, I don't know if Jo wants to share some details if she's still watching, um, we've got something coming up for Christmas, 12 days of Christmas, I don't know if she wanted me to announce this or not, but I'm just doing it, um, for anyone that's interested in crafting and cookery, we've got some fantastic things coming up that Jo's been working on. So just make sure if you haven't followed our page that you do that so that you don't miss out on those coming up as well. Also, just a reminder, again, if you haven't seen it, we've got a competition on at the moment to design a cosy cafe. And you can design it using any mediums you like. So you don't have to draw it. You don't even have to make a model of it. You could use um, Minecraft even if you wanted to, to, to design a cafe and just film film the insides of it and outsides of it and submit that to us and the closing date is this Friday for that competition if I remember rightly but probably more interestingly is that there are prizes we've got five goodie bags art goodie bags with contents worth over 50 pounds lots of goodies in there that we put together and we'll be announcing the winners of that competition uh, next Friday on our end of term live where we celebrate some of the work of our learners on our creative craft courses as well um, and we'll be announcing other bits and pieces but also announcing the winners of that competition so if you haven't seen it already again have a look on our previous posts on facebook you'll see the details and how to enter it's really simple you just literally email your entry into joe at joe technology triumphs at outlook.com and we will draw the winners which is always a tricky part of our job trying to figure out who to get award the prizes to they're always all so awesome. Oh, Joe's just message. Yes, we have some exciting bits to share. Our newsletter publishes tomorrow featuring some festive fun for all. Awesome, yes. So, um, again, if you didn't know, we have a newsletter each month. Again, where we share information, we share the work of some of our learners that want to share it. And if you haven't seen those, again, you can see from our previous post on Facebook, or if you look at our website, you can see our historic websites, uh, newsletters as well. And our website's technologytriumphs.co.uk. And Joe has been busy putting something together to keep us busy over the Christmas festive period, whether you celebrate Christmas or not. Just some things that you can do if you've got time at home with your family. I know Michael's looking forward to doing some of those. So am I, to be fair. <laughs> I think half the time it's more for us adults. Just about 10 minutes left so i think i will just get done hopefully what i've colored out already but really you can see if you if you spend much more time on the detail it's a lot harder to get to the whole image but the quality of what you've drawn can really level up so this isn't a rough sketch of a snake this is a much more detailed look and you get a better understanding of the anatomy of the snake as well when you've really studied it like this and drawn it like this. You really get a feel for it. 
and it helps you to show the texture and as well as the shape and the colour. So it's a good exercise to do, I think. I was thinking one term we could do really detailed looks at just different features of the animals. So for example just feet just close up on the eye, get a real detailed look. So if you really look at an eye, maybe if you get a chance today, you've got a sibling or a parent or anyone at home, that you can really look at their eye. The amount of detail that's in it that we just take for granted. If we were to draw that or paint that, it would be a fascinating illustration by itself. And I could imagine having a series of paintings of animals, just their eyes. Because if you look at the snake's eye, for example, it's very different to our eye, especially with the shape of the pupil. If you look at a cat's eye, that's another good example. So maybe that's something we can do another time. Can we see Michael's drawing? I will grab it for you. He disappeared. He got bored of hearing my voice, I think. Let's see if this is Michael's one. So he's got the different tones in the eye and he's got a funky green background as well to show the habitat and you can see the stripes going down his body as well. So that's Michael's. I'll tell him well done but he's not here. So <laughs> I'll, I'll tell him later. Because it's his birthday at the weekend so I think he wants to get back to some of his new new bits and pieces. He's got a, he's doing our photography course so he's got a new tripod for his cam his phone camera and a special lens, like a telescopic lens, so he's been playing with that to take photographs of he imagines he wants to be a wildlife photographer at the moment, so um that's gonna come in handy so I think he's pl having a play with that. I'm doing it again, I'm holding my breath through concentration. I suddenly pass out during the live, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Especially if Michael's abandoned me now. I've got one last fact for you just to do with their sizes. Adults grow to a total length, including their tail, of 60 to 90 centimetres. So they can grow to just shy of a metre long and a mass of 50 to 180 grams. So not, not particularly weighty, not particularly heavy. So although it's not considered to be threatened, it's not considered to be endangered, it is protected in some countries. I believe it is protected in the UK actually, now that I've said that. So it is illegal to cause it harm. where I've got to the end here I'm sort of going to fade it out with the watercolour so that looks like part of the artwork and what I'll probably do is rub out the other pencil marks so it's a finished drawing in its own right even though I've only done the head Is 
a very detailed head. rubber go in and rub out some of those other pencil marks and then again we'll try and stretch the color down a bit that's it for me I think that is my finished illustration although it is just focused on the head of the viper of the adder I'm quite pleased with the fact that I was able to put in a lot of detail in the scales and to, to show the accuracy that I wouldn't have been able to achieve definitely not within an hour if I tried to draw the whole body in so um, yeah I'm quite pleased with that actually but remember yeah finish until you signed it signed it and date it so that is my Reptile from Czechoslovakia. We've looked at the common adder or viper as it's known. We've learned some interesting facts, some new words I've never seen before, especially the fact that the adder gives birth to the eggs within its body and they hatch within its body. And also the fact that we don't call snakes poisonous, they're venomous. A mushroom can be poisonous if you ingest it, not venomous. A snake, anything that bites you, is venomous, not poisonous. So I learned a few things new today. Hopefully you did too. Next week is our final draw along of this term before we um, take a bit of a break over the Christmas period, and it's going to be a salamander. So another another challenge with looking at an amphibian this time is really colourful with a like yellow and black salamander. Um, so don't forget the event is already created if you want to make sure you click on it to attend so that you get reminders and then next term i can't remember the date we're actually returning i want to say it's something like the 11th of january and i believe we're looking at arctic animals or antarctic animals we're looking at things like polar bears and penguin and arctic foxes so another new challenge because most of the animals we're drawing will be white so we'll have to look at adding in backgrounds and foregrounds otherwise we're going to have very little to do in terms of shading so yeah hopefully see some of you next week and just a reminder that if you want some feedback of your drawing between 6 and 9 p.m tonight you're looking for this image not the not the image of the the actual photo you're looking for my drawing and you can post a comment under there and i'll come along before 9 p.m and write you some feedback if you want some and that includes parents and facilitators if you have joined in as well and you'd like some feedback then by all means do feel free to add in your artwork as well i really look forward to seeing your interpretations thank you so much for joining us this was another challenging one and um, so well done for everyone that that joined in and stuck with it i um once again look forward to seeing your work and i'll speak to you later bye